Beautiful. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Ladies Power Lunch. Thank you so much for joining us. We're right on the heels of our Ladies Power Lunch Fall Summit. And I thought it would be the perfect time to bring back somebody who was really pivotal in the presentations that we were able to make on, I think you were on the Monday program. Am I right, Jen? Yeah. Welcome, Jen. And will you just share with everybody who you are and what you do. Also want to say hello to Teresa, who's joining us here in the Zoom studios. Hi, Teresa. Teresa was at Retreat House with us, taking all the pictures and just basically being the beacon from behind her camera. So that was awesome. So welcome, Teresa. We'll invite you to introduce yourself in just a moment. But Jen, tell everybody who you are, what you do, and kind of just share with everybody what your beacon is into the world. Um, so uh, Jen Jones, Connect and Elevate. I am the founder and master connector, and I help introvert women entrepreneurs, you know, shine their light. It's it's this new language that I've I've gotten over the last week. It's the shining your light, shining your beacon, and it's using community. It's using um, your introvert gifts and also managing your energy as an introvert to put what you have into the world without burning out and without having to retreat for um, weeks, hours, you know, months on end. You know, right? And come out like, you know, you kind of come, come down into a hermit and then you kind of you come out. So I am here to help keep that balancing act between, um, you know, your, your business, but also your introvert life. So. Thanks for having me today. And hi, Teresa. Hi. hi, Teresa. Thanks, Jen. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So I would love to invite you, Teresa, to just share with everybody who you are and what you do in the world. So I am Teresa, and I am the owner of Teresa Nat Studio, and I help women entrepreneurs to grow their businesses, to make more connections through the use of unique story-driven imagery. So that's photos and videos. Awesome. And what was your experience being down at Retreat House with us this week? I mean, it was so inspiring to be around you and Liz and Lori. I left on such a high yesterday. And I just, I love seeing, I love seeing how far everyone has grown like even Liz I met her right before the pandemic and her business has just absolutely blown up and it's just so inspiring to see the connections she's made and how she's used her light and using collaboration to just grow her business and the people that she's brought into her circle are just equally as amazing. Awesome. I want to remind everybody that if you did not have an opportunity to see the summit, summit is still live. It's going to be live in the Encaptive portal until Tuesday at 3 p.m. So I know we can't time travel yet, but in a way you can time travel. You can go back in time and watch all the videos. Every single one of them is up there. So Jen's video from Monday morning of our summit is still available available for you to watch if you missed it. And also you'll have an opportunity to see a conversation that I had with Elizabeth about how her business changed when she started using Grow Smarter principles to grow her business instead of pushing and pulling and going harder and just doing it and all of that, she actually shifted her focus to more collaboration based and asking for guidance and all the things that we talk about with Grow Smarter. And she really, really has seen a tremendous change. So I invite everybody, the portal is open, go in, check it out. If you were in a workshop and you missed the other workshops and you're curious about what was going on there, check it out. Go ahead and check it out. We're really, really excited for you to take advantage of the Encaptive portal. It's the new way that we are doing our virtual events with Ladies Power Lunch at this time. So, Jen. Yes. <laughs> hey. Well, first off, I'd like to say I'm excited and I just wrote it down to remind myself to do some stuff over the weekend because there were a couple of workshops that um, I didn't get a chance to be part of and I mm -hmm. definitely want to go back and check them out. So, Are there any in particular that you didn't get a chance to watch and you're like, it hmm. was 
Yeah. So there was one and, and, you know, I can't remember her name and it might be Lori, but spelled differently, like L-A-U-R-I, the, the woman who was doing like movement. Oh, um, yes. Yes. That's that. Laura. 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 Okay. Laura okay. Monk, Dr. Laura Monk. Yes. Yes. I want to hop in there. Um, I know Michelle Lemoy is going to be on um, at one o'clock. So I want to hop into her workshop. So there were a couple of them that I definitely want to check out and, and then kind of browse because I don't even remember, but those were the two that stuck out that I want to, I want to definitely go back and check out. Awesome. Well, I once again, just invite everybody to, you know, I said it so many times on Summit, but I want to say it again, for those of you who were not at Summit, it's not too late to call Sandy 860-589-1491 and she can get you hooked up with the replays. You could actually still see the whole entire summit, even if you didn't have your ticket already. Just talk to Sandy. She'll get you organized for that. And if you miss, if you already have your ticket, if you're already in possession of your login for the portal, you can go back in there at any time of the day or night until 3 p.m. Eastern time next week, Tuesday. So everybody do take advantage of that because I keep talking about this opportunity is all around us. It's everywhere, but we're not always tuned into it. And so we miss it. And then we say, oh, but my business isn't growing or oh, things aren't going well. Guess what? I am pointing you in the direction like there's an opportunity. Go take advantage of it. So people take advantage of it for sure. Really excited to have you chatting with us today, Jen. And I really want to ask you to give us a little bit of background about how your beacon that you shine in the world is helping female entrepreneurs and a few men to really shine their light more brightly in their business. Absolutely. And um, I just want to say that it was really enlightening um, on Monday to hear all the amazing feedback from the Reluctant Beacon, which is the workshop that I did. And I really took that information to really put together this just amazing opportunity for people. So what my women introvert entrepreneurs, you know, the things that they say to me and why they come work with, with me is they're like, I don't want to go and network everywhere. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to show up in, you know, have to, you know, talk about myself or talk about my business. Um, you know, the reluctance is there um, probably more times than not. And I did share my own story. I think we all maybe on here have a little bit of reluctance every now and then, but that's what it is. That's what's holding them back. It's the fear of um, rejection. It's the fear of, you know, just stepping out into the light. And what happens is that once we're able to go through the process of managing their energy, manage my own energy. Once we're able to do that, we're just in a better place to, to give uh, when we have our cup full. And so ultimately it's really taking care of ourselves first and then our family, our business and all of that stuff really falls into place, but we have to do it on purpose. And so that's been, you know, one of the things that I've been talking a lot about with my clients is when we're doing things with intention and on purpose is when our focus is really clear and we're able to, you know, cause there's a lot of squirrel syndrome, you know, like, ah, you know, there's always something new around and we're like, oh, we're going to try this. We're going to try this. How about just pulling yourself back and looking at the energy that you do have and what can you focus on? And it doesn't have to be three to five things. It could be one or two things. So what I like to, and I'll pull in what I liked about the summit is that, you know, you're talking about, you can go and have, get the replays. It wasn't a full day. Like it wasn't like, oh my gosh, you're on at 10 o'clock and we're done at three or three 30, forget what the time was. And you're not like in sessions the whole time. Like we had breaks to really pull back. Like we literally got off zoom. And I think that that's really important as we look at our own business is that we do need time to step back and fit that into our calendar and actually put it in our calendar 
those breaks because that's what helps us be a better business owner. It helps us be a better mom or wife or friend or sister or brother, depending on, you know, where you are. Um, you know, so I think just really managing your energy is one of the most important things in business and in life. And yet we, we don't really appreciate how important it is to manage our energy. It's so interesting though. I, I feel like I need to just pat myself on the back a little bit here. Talking to my son this morning, we were listening. So he's 11. We were listening to The Power of Now on Audible. And he was saying to me, yeah, you know, mom, we do need breaks. I mean, even Einstein took a whole bunch of naps. And I'm like, yes, I am doing something right. This child is understanding that the downtime actually aids the production time. It really, really does. And managing that energy is so important. We have a new book out. Congratulations, Jen, on being one of the Ladies Pearl Lunch Anthology authors for our newest anthology book, Be the Beacon. Will you share with everybody just a little bit about your chapter in our book. Don't give it all away, Jen. I know your chapter is so captivating and so important and interesting, but don't give it all away. I really want people to tune in, go download the book. I think it might be free today um, to download on Kindle. If it's not, don't hold that against me. It's been free for a couple of days. Um, but tell us a little bit about your chapter in the book. So, I am launching my own book in December, hopefully, if we can pull everything together. So uh, over the course of the last six, eight months, it's been a challenge to come forward and bring your story, right? Bring what you have learned in life. Um, I'll be 44 in January and bring Yay, it forward. Congratulations. <laughs> and bring it forward. And so um, it actually was a super challenge for me to actually share my story about how I actually, as an introvert, which some people are like, I don't really see you as an introvert. I see you as an extrovert because you're always yeah, out there. People don't understand the idea of what an introvert is. When I tell people, I am the biggest introvert out there. There is nobody who's more introverted than me. I don't think they exist. And they're like, yeah, but you're always, it's not that simple. Share with us, Jen. Why is it not that simple? So it's not that simple. So although we can be social, because I think some people think that introverts are shy and they're quiet, and there are introverts that are shy and quiet, and that's just their personality. But ultimately, being an introvert just means that you go inward to get your energy. So we most of us like to be alone to get our energy rejuvenated, where an extrovert gets their energy from being around other people. And, you know, and I'm boxing people in when I say introvert, extrovert, there's this, this spectrum, guys, it really is, it's a spectrum, but anyone that can relate to after doing something, I need some downtime, then that is what an introvert is. It doesn't matter if you can stand up on stage and talk to a thousand people um, or not. It, it just matters. Hey, are they going to go to the after party and have a good time? Or are they going to like try to sneak out to their, you know, hotel room for a little bit before heading over to the after party? So your, your solo book is coming out in... I want to say November is what we're December. projecting on that. Yeah, December. <laughs> yeah. So December, right? Early yep. December. So yep. you have some things that are going to be upcoming between now and then. Yes. Would you like to share a little bit about that so that those of us who are really interested can participate in that? Oof. Ooh, where's the list? So I'm um, working on putting out into the world an amazing masterclass, which if you were unable to um, come to the summit, um, I am revamping Reluctant Beacon and bringing it to everybody on a bigger front. And then we're going to put together um, a masterclass, I mean, a, mas a mastermind, where we bring people together who are introvert women entrepreneurs, and I'm big on action and implementation. So how do you take that information and actually act on it and make a difference in your business? So we're going to bring together a mastermind with other women introvert entrepreneurs, and we're going to do a four-week 
class or course, haven't really gotten the name situated yet, but it'll be four weeks taking the principles from the book and actually doing something like a book study and really going deep every week into the four principles of intropreneur. So I'll give you a little sneak peek on that. I love the idea of doing a book study on just about any book that's important to you, because one of the things that I know, and I'm just gonna, I do this very often, so you guys are very familiar with my office by now. So that's just one of the four bookshelves that are in my office. I mean, I'm constantly reading, and that doesn't even take into consideration all the books that are on my Kindle and my Audible how much of that information am I applying into my business on a daily basis? That's the question. But when we actually do have the opportunity to do something like a book study or a course based on a book, then we can get that implementation and that integration. Because, you know, one of the smartest women that I know, her name is Darla Ledoux. She always keeps reminding us that you can get information anywhere, anything you want to know you could Google it pretty much yep. with, within reason. But the truth is the value comes with the implementation. The value comes with the integration. And so I'm really looking forward to what you're offering with your book study that's coming up. Um, are you set up yet for people to perhaps get on a list to be waitlisted for that when you're launching it? So no wait list as of yet, but we do have a free gift for you. Um, if you haven't taken the opportunity to grab it, it is the um, four steps to your pure energy design. So it goes through and helps you um, think about your energy and how you can rejuvenate um, in a meaningful and on purpose way. So we do have that available. And if you get on that list, you will hear about everything that we have launching over the next 60 days. And I'm really excited for your new book that's coming out. Tell us a little bit about, you know, the do's and don'ts of managing your energy when you're out there in a networking world. Yes. So um, I'll, I'll pull three because I have a whole list. Sure. So when you're out and about in person, if you're out networking, it is really important to one, know where the bathroom is and where you can actually escape the event so that you can say, okay, you know what, I'm going to run to the bathroom, but then you know that there's a place where you can sort of take a deep breath and say, okay, like I got this, you know, can be very overwhelming people's, you know, especially if you're an empath and you pick up on other people's yes. energy. So it's really important to just, um, I call it the escape plan <laughs> so that you can actually go and just get that little bit of breathing time, you know, it centers you, it gets you in a place where you can go and finish the event, um, or you could just leave. So that's your choice. Um, secondly is, you know, go into an event with the expectation that you're going to make one amazing connection. You don't need to meet everybody. You don't need to hand out your business card to everybody. You don't need to talk to everybody. Um, you go in there and you're like, you know, I'm going to attract that one person and go do that. And then I encourage you that you, if you are comfortable in the networking event and the people that are there, remember that there's always new people walking through the door and you can be, you can be that beacon and actually just physically, you know, step aside so someone can come in. Or if you feel led to do so, go up to that person and say, hey, why don't you come over and chat with me and, you know, whoever else you're with. So leave the door open for the new people to come in so that they don't feel sort of, you know, like an outcast. And a lot of those people would be introverts because they wouldn't just interrupt your circle. Um, they would just sort of just stand there alone by themselves. Um, so that's love sort that. of a do and a don't. <laughs> I love that. That's wonderful. I really love that. It reminds me of my very, very first networking meeting that I attended. It was at the Thomaston Savings Bank in Terryville, Connecticut. And I remember I walked into the door first time, never did anything like that before, because I was coming from corporate in a very established role in my organization. So that we didn't have that. And I walked in and there are all these, it's like everybody just turned around and looked at me. It was so odd. And there was a woman and very many of you might know her. Her name is Alice and she is an attorney. 
And she walked over to me and she said, hi, I'm Alice, welcome. And she walked me over to the group of people that she was standing with. And she asked me who I was and she introduced me to her little small group of people. And so by the time I left, I at least knew those people who were part of that little circle. And so the next time that I went to a networking thing, I did exactly what Alice did. I watched to see somebody who was coming in who was new. I invited her to come join my little circle. That was now my little circle. I introduced her own to the people there. And I just kept doing that. And I feel like in a way over the years, that was 11 years ago, in a way over the years, that was sort of the beginning of how Ladies Power Lunch ended up being formed because it was always just an opportunity to be the bridge for somebody else who might have felt the way that I felt that really first day when I walked into an uncomfortable networking situation. Awesome. Yeah. I love that story. <laughs> yeah, I, if you feel like sharing it, always feel comfortable sharing any of my stories because if my story can ever help anybody, then you are welcome to it. Uh, Teresa, any questions or concerns about being the reluctant beacon, shining as brightly as you can, networking, any issues that come up for you when you're out there networking? You have the expert here. I think for me, it really does come down to, I tend to get very drained when I'm around groups of people and especially like my job, I put so much of my own energy into my, I mean, sure. We all put so much of our own ourselves and our energy into our clients. So I usually go from like a session to a networking event and I'm already drained. And I think it's just balancing. I have trouble balancing. Do you have any tips for how to kind of balance that energy? So I always say put white space in your calendar. And sometimes that's not always easy to do. And I think that we get in the habit of like, cause I always think, oh, and I still do it. I still do stuff back to back and go, why? I think the habit of just always having that buffer time or just know that when you're done, you are going to have that time to sort of rejuvenate and look forward to. And just in the moment, I call them like mini rejuvenations. And that is, even if you could just take five or 10 minutes just to not be around other people's energy, where you could just breathe or you could visualize, you know, going into this next event with some energy and you're going to meet the right people. So it's not going to drain you as much as you think it's going to. I love that. I love that. That's awesome. You know, I have, I have to say that that technique is something that helps me get through the day because I go from patient to patient to patient to patient. It's, it's back to back. It's one after the other. And even if it's just to take four deep breaths before I walk into the next room, just making space for that, even if I'm running behind, it helps to make sure that the interaction with the next patient remains focused on him or her and that I'm not racing ahead in my mind or my energy isn't dropping or something like that. So I absolutely agree with that, Jen, that just taking time to make a little space, even if it's just a small amount of space, seems to help me. And I'm the classic introvert. So if it helps me, then I think it work, It will work for many of us. It's awesome. just building in the habit, right? Building in the habit of doing it because we're so accustomed to the go, 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 busy, busy, busy that like to even think that, can I even take that one minute to breathe? Because my watch said that I should breathe. It's like, oh, one minute feels like forever. And then you just feel so, I don't know. I usually feel so much better, even if I just use my watch to do a one minute breathing exercise. Beautiful. I love that. Any final words for us before we go? If we take nothing else, Jen, away from this conversation, what would your wise words of wisdom be? Say that three times fast. Right. (laughs) So um, after this week, I'm just going to stick with the theme of 
What does being the beacon mean for you? What is shining your light mean for you in a way that keeps your energy in a place that feels really good and you don't feel like you're completely dying inside? So your fire is burning, but you're not burning to the ground. So really think about that. And, you know, I think it's, it's a nice journal prompt to figure out what is bringing you the joy in your life and business. And as we're getting close to planning for 2022, what does it look like for you um, in, you know, as we go into fourth, well, we're in fourth quarter and as we go into 2022 and how does that energy shift for you? because you're more focused on the things that bring you joy and the things that are, you're able to shine your light as bright as possible because you're managing your energy. Beautiful. I want to remind everybody that Jen is going to be launching her book early December. So y'all don't want to miss out on that at all. It's going to be outstanding. I know this firsthand. I also want to remind you that she's going to be doing a master class, a mastermind leading up to the book launch. And so you definitely want to tune in for that because that's going to give you an opportunity, not just to read the book, but to really implement the principles into your life and into your business. I think you've all really embraced the idea of living this life that has more ease and flow. And part of it is really knowing how to manage your energy so that you can be the brightest beacon that you can be. Just stay lit at all times. Um, remember to tune in to get Jen's free gift. And can you remind us about your free gift? Yep. The free gift is four steps to your energy design. And I can pop it after we're done. I'll pop it in the comments so everyone can go grab their free copy. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jen. I want to say also thank you to Teresa for joining us here. Teresa is the official photographer for and videographer for our Ladies Power Lunch Fall Summit 2021. Really appreciate all the work that you did over the past week. It was really wonderful having you at Retreat House. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Remember, please remember to go back into the site. The you guys don't even understand how amazing this site is. It has opportunities for you to relive the summit from relive every moment of the summit, even the moments you missed. You'll have the opportunity to take advantage of all the offers. Remember how when we used to go to summits, we used to go to all the booths and collect a pen here and collect a notepad here. Well, all the offers this year are virtual. So you have an opportunity to go back in and claim all your offers. You have an opportunity to visit all our sponsor booths. You have an opportunity to connect with all the people who were at the summit. So go on, tune in, hop on to Encaptive and really see what the new technology is that we're using for our summits and enjoy something that's new and different. Thanks everybody for joining us. Thank you, Jen. Thank you, Teresa. And I'll see you guys on the next show. Bye everyone. Bye.